well-being specialist, an author, and a former senior lecturer at the New Zealand College of Fitness. Please welcome Lauren Parsons to the stage. To begin, can I invite you to think about how you feel right now in your body? Just think from top to toe, how do you feel? Is it good, bad, energized, tired, something in between? See if you could come up with one word that describes how you feel and hold on to that because we'll come back to it in a few minutes. In my early 20s, I was the customer services manager in a big gym, but I did a terrible job. I was in charge of the trainers out on the gym floor, but I spent virtually no time out on that gym floor myself. I was so overwhelmed with my to-do list that I thought I had no time to exercise, which is ironic, seeing as I was supposed to be the leader, setting the example for my team and for our members. Instead, I just sat in my back office, chained to my desk. Something changed when I did further study, and I discovered there were all these myths about exercise that I had believed. I found out that I didn't have to train 30 minutes to see results, and that I could work out every muscle in my body in just three exercises. The things I learnt completely transformed my paradigm about exercise. So I came up with my own little three exercise routine, which took less than 10 minutes. And I finally found the time to fit it in twice a week. And just one month later, I had doubled my bench press strength and tripled my squatting strength. And I was astounded. And it got me thinking, how many other people are missing out on the benefits of exercise because they perhaps believe myths that just aren't true? And how can I make it easier for people to get started? For 18 years, people have told me over and over the biggest reason they don't exercise is I don't have time. But what if there's a solution for that. Let's just do a quick poll. Please raise your hand if you're busy. So just raise your hand nice and high if you're fairly busy in your life right now. Okay, so that's the majority, thank you. And now raise your hand if you brush your teeth every day. Let me just check around the room. <laughs> okay, so I think we're at 100% there. Isn't it interesting? that even when you're busy, you still find time to brush your teeth. And if that's two minutes, morning and night, what if you could spend four little minutes not just looking after the small part of your body, but looking after your entire body? What if you could snack on exercise in short, sharp bursts that you could easily fit into your day? Because who doesn't love a good snack, right? And what I mean is to do something to get your heart rate up and or something to strengthen your muscles. And it doesn't even have to be four minutes in a row. What if you got moving for one minute when you woke up, one minute mid-morning, one minute at lunchtime, and one in the afternoon? Small things add up to make a big difference. And the research backs this up. A 2016 study at McMaster University took two groups of people and got them to cycle on stationary bikes. One group cycled at a steady rate for 50 minutes, almost an hour. And they did that three times a week. The other group did sprints. They cycled flat out for just 20 seconds, and they did three sprints in a total of 10 minutes. And they also trained three times a week. 
And what the researchers found when they compared the improvements in terms of cardiovascular fitness, muscle adaptation, fat loss, and insulin sensitivity was that the results were virtually identical. Virtually identical. Which is phenomenal when you think that the sprinting group did only one minute of real effort and that the steady group cycled for five times as long. Studies. Some that have been done with cardiac rehab patients, some with diabetics, with people across all age groups, which all show how powerful small amounts of exercise can be. And you don't have to do sprints to see results. This is accessible to anyone at any fitness level because you can apply this principle of small bursts to save time and see incredible health benefits. And there are so many different ways that you can snack on exercise. It could be that while the kettle boils in the morning, you do some push-ups on your kitchen counter. That when you're at work, you get up for a desk size break. That when you're at the playground, you play with your kids. Or you get outdoors with your entire family as a great way to connect. What if you greeted your kids in the evening by throwing them in the air? Oh, and catching them again. <laughs> Works well for me with my four-year-old. More challenging, perhaps, with your 14 or 40-year-old. You might have heard that uh, sitting is the new smoking. Research shows us that having a sedentary lifestyle, which is defined as six or more hours sitting per day, increases morbidity and mortality more than smoking does. Well, plainly said, if you sit for extended periods, you're more likely to get seriously ill earlier and to die younger. And that remains true even if you exercise at other times. It's the extended periods of sitting that we need to avoid. So if smokers take a smoke break, why not take a movement break? In fact, let's take one right now. Can I invite you all to stand up with me? Please put everything down. Stand up if you're able to, and just do what is comfortable for you. So we're gonna reach up and reach down. Perfect, reach high, reach lower. And if you're watching this at home, make sure you join in, don't miss the experience. <laughs> and now some uppercuts. So nice and strong, watch your neighbor. And now sprint finish, fast feet. Let's hear it. Three, two, one, deep breath, and relax. All right, go ahead and give somebody a high five as you take your seats, well done, on both sides. And as you settle down, just think how you feel now in your body, in your brain. Has that one word from earlier perhaps changed? Do you feel more alive, alert, invigorated? That wasn't even 60 seconds. We didn't even get a sweat up. You have just changed your body's biochemistry. You've just made yourself smarter. I bet you're thinking, wow, I've just released neurotransmitters in my brain, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine. Not only does exercise help you to feel good, it also switches on all the learning centers in your brain. It makes you more focused, more innovative, and better at problem solving. So why is it that we head into a problem solving meeting and we all sit down? A marketing firm I worked with once introduced the practice of the little gold bell. One person would ring it every day and everyone would stand up for 60 seconds to snack on exercise. It made them much more creative. Another organization got their staff to set recurring timers in their phones, reminding them to take a movement break. It made them much more focused and more productive. Now I wanna be clear that I'm not saying you should only do four minutes of exercise a day. 
longer workouts can give you even more benefit. But the thing I hear most often when I share this concept of snacking on exercise is that sounds doable. That sounds doable, Lauren. And that is what this is all about. One of my clients, Anna, who has a toddler and a baby, ran up to me and said, Lauren, you've taken away all my excuses. I used to think, after having the kids, that I'd never get my fitness back. But now, I just get down and do floor exercises with Ben when I'm changing him. And when Sophie asks me to dance, I say yes, and add some lunges and jumps. And it's working. I feel fitter and stronger and happier than before. Snacking on exercise is all about helping you get started. Make it almost effortless to start. And if you're already exercising, helping you get even more benefits, not just for your physical health, but also for your mental health. Because exercise is proven as a potent antidepressant. Imagine if movement could become a fun and uplifting and integral part of your day. Imagine if you no longer compartmentalized it over here on your to-do list. Something you've got to get changed and you've got to go somewhere for. What if you could integrate it into everything that you do? That when you talk on the phone, you get up and walk around. That when you brush your teeth, you just add squats. <laughs> that every set of stairs you see, you get to the top as fast as you can. Last week, I was at Vancouver Airport, waiting at the gate with everyone else for our 14 hour flight to New Zealand. And I felt self-conscious wanting to get moving. I ended up hiding myself in a quiet corner so I could get down and do my stretching, strengthening routine. Sometimes, when I'm at the playground, I wish that I wasn't the only parent up there on the monkey bars playing with their kids. But here's the thing. If we all do it, it becomes normal. What if movement was the new social norm? Can you imagine going to an energized workplace, sending your kids to an active school and living in a vibrant, connected community? Last year, I ran a free exercise challenge and invited people to commit to four minutes of exercise every day. I sent out snack idea video clips from top fitness professionals from all around the world and the response was phenomenal. We had over a thousand people take part and the best thing was hearing their feedback. Hearing how it made it so easy achievable, how it took away the excuses, and how it was so motivating because it made it fun. How it boosted people's mood and made them feel more connected to others. That they felt fitter and stronger, more energized, more clear-minded, and much more productive. And that it gave them the start they needed to keep exercising. Now you may be wondering why this is even so important to me. I'll always remember the day when I was floored in a flood of tears and my five-year-old daughter comes in and says, Mummy, why are you crying? And I replied, Mummy's just had some bad news from the doctor. You see, I was 30 weeks pregnant at the time, and I just found out that I had gestational diabetes and was facing some serious complications. And that both I and this unborn child now had a higher likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. So I was devastated. Fortunately, I was able to manage it by closely monitoring my blood sugar levels 
and by getting in more regular exercise every day, something I hadn't been doing because of back pain. So I'm incredibly grateful now to have this healthy, happy little girl. The day she was born filled me with joy, and I plan for us to defy those stats and to be able to live diabetes free. Here's why I'm so passionate about sharing this message. I don't want anyone else to have to get that phone call out of the blue from their doctor saying that they or their children have diabetes or any other sort of disease that could have been prevented. But I'm not here today because of me. I'm here because of you. You are amazing. You're the sort of person who watches TED Talks. <laughs> and you have the power to create change in your own life, in your own body. To wrap up, there are two things I'd love you to do. First is try this out. See what a difference it makes for you. Whether you get ideas by joining our free challenge, or you just snack on exercise on your own. Why not, tomorrow morning, while the kettle is boiling, just do some push-ups on your kitchen counter. And then share this with someone else. Help to spread this idea. When you get moving, you'll inspire other people to move as well. Can you imagine living in a world where it's more natural to take the stairs than it is to push that button on the elevator? Where it's normal to get up from your desk and move, or to move at the airport? A world where it's just as normal to snack on exercise as it is to brush your teeth. By trying it out and inspiring others to try it too, you can help create a healthier, happier world for you, for your children. And it starts by snacking on exercise. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>